G'day, g'day, everyone, and welcome back to Measure Twice, Cut Once, uh, with myself, Dirk, from Sumo's Projects on YouTube, uh, also Instagram and Facebook, and um, this is the YouTube version of the show, and uh, where it can also be found on um, podcast streaming services such as iTunes, Google Podcasts, Podbean, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, TuneIn, and Alexa, so there's plenty of places you can find this program. Um, so you can't miss out. <laughs> uh, taking us through is my wonderful co-host who's uh, in the last week been out, um, I think he's been spearfishing great white sharks, so we welcome now to the show the one and only Mr Chris Zurek. G'day Chris. Yes, hello Dirk. Um, yeah, it's been uh, pretty hot hot up there on the, um, the Great Barrier Reef with the uh, spear gun and everything. Again, come back with nothing but a jar of gummy bears, but it is what it is. Um, here we are, episode 11, I believe. Wow, who would have thought? Uh, we've got a couple of good topics to talk about today. Um, I think uh, maybe we should just about jump straight into it. What do you reckon? Yeah, Chris, mate, we've, uh, we've got a pretty dandy show as we try to present every other week. Uh, this one is, once again, uh, uh, an option from Martin Briggs, Marvin Briggs up in Queensland, and he uh, introduces the topic today of... Uh, how and where to sharpen saw blades and chisel blades and all types of blades uh, we are needing and requiring in, in the woodworking game. So, Chris, it's um, it's an interesting topic, but um, let's first of all hear what you've been up to because I've been flat out like a lizard drinking, mate, and um, I'm sure I'm sure you've been equally to the task. Let us know. It just seems the older I get, the more I'm doing. It's um, it's driving me crazy. I'm constantly on the go, constantly on the go. If it's not at work, it's doing my own thing. Uh, like today, for example, I was uh, putting in some cupboards for a customer. Um, took me a little while to get those put in. Back home, quick shower, jump on the computer to do this with you. Tomorrow I'm, um, I'm going to start... Uh, ripping my um, workshop to pieces, getting it ready to, um, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to start it. It's the big one, tomorrow the big start. So I, I'll just have to see how I go with that. Oh, hang on. No, I forgot. I've got to finish off the um, the bed head that I'm doing for a customer. I've got to do that. So maybe Monday. Maybe Monday I'll start pulling the garage apart. Um, but other than that, just keep on keeping on. Yeah, I think you're right, mate. I'm... Uh... Fortunate enough, I've got I've got a couple of weeks off from work now. Thank God. Um, I've just uh, been looking forward to a break so I can do a few things I want to do. Uh, work's not everything in life, mate, but it helps. Um, now I've got uh, four videos up, not up yet on YouTube, but I've got a I finished my bedside drawers. Uh, they come up looking absolutely beautiful. A couple of coats of polyurethane, uh, and fully extendable drawer slides. So uh, just letting that final coat just to dry, but I've got all the hardware on. That's ready to go. Another video I've got making some cabinetry for the big tool wall. That's probably going to be released soon. And uh, I've got several others in the pipeline, Chris, so that's keeping me amused and bemused, so they say. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to be busy and it's great to, uh, you know, factor in having a little bit of spare time. And as you said, you know, it's been a busy year in many regards for a lot of people. Uh, so, you know, it's now time to reward ourselves by doing the things we enjoy doing, the hobby, and uh, it's, you know, it's gratifying that we can get a result finally. For sure, for sure. Mm. Can I just point out, uh, I'm pretty sure our viewers are pretty switched on. They're going to notice that we're both sitting in front of microphones wearing headphones. We are now officially professional. Woohoo! We're in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a there was quite a my, few cheers. <laughs> my my favorite saying, Dirk, is if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. And I think that's what we're doing here. <laughs> and if uh, if you could have been a fly on the wall when Chris and uh, our our tech expert Patrick were trying to help me set up this uh, microphone and get all the things ready, yeah, that was uh, interesting times to say the least, Chris. 
A lot of tears were shed, I can, uh, I can guarantee that. <laughs> but mind you, you can see behind me, I've got, I've got uh, a nice backdrop now and I'm going to fill that wall with some, uh, with some nice furniture I'm going to make in the future, so stay tuned. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll kick it off by sending you a picture of myself so you can put it up on that wall. Look forward to it, mate. Which way does it go? That way or the really other way? Uh, I'll leave it up to you. It'll be transparent, I don't see it from every angle. <laughs> All right, I reckon uh, that's enough. Uh, enough of that. Let's get into the uh, the main topic. Yeah. So uh, thanks to Marvin Briggs uh, for mentioning today's uh, topic. And if you want to know and have us discuss a particular topic. Please drop us a line anywhere in the comments or on our socials so we can know and we can uh, future plan for that. Yeah, down below. And we've also got guests coming up in the near future. But now we'll uh, look at what's coming up today. And we're discussing all things to do with uh, blade maintenance and sharpening of uh, woodworking tool blades. Um, as um, as far as we know and what we've done. Uh, so, Chris, you're probably sharpened or had a few blades sharpened in your day um can you sort of you know allude to uh what blades to sharpen saws chisels and carbide that you've worked with yeah dirk i uh, i had um well i've got a, a good a decent set of chisels at home and um and i used to send them out to get them sharpened all the time but for some reason the last time they came back they was that blunt that i i would have struggled to cut butter with them um, and having and just going through that, I decided I'm going to give it a go and sharpen my own chisels to see how that went. Um, and it, with with uh, uh, saw blades, and I'll, I'll get back to the chisels in a sec. With the saw blades, um, I I haven't really taken saw blades to be sharpened, or I haven't tried to sharpen them myself. I've always been the one that um, as soon as it's blunt, toss it, get a new one, because. But the thing is, I, I bought sort of the, the, the cheap brands. Mm. Now I'm starting to buy the more expensive ones, like the um, the Diablo one that you put me onto. That thing is incredible. Um, it still cuts like a hot knife through butter, so I, 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 um, I haven't tried to sharpen it myself or I haven't taken it anywhere. Um, but I will find somebody who, uh, who sharpens blades. I won't go back to the same bloke that I went to before, um, purely because of the way he... He buggered up my chisels the last time. Um, but I'm going to find someone who can do them just to see. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep buying brand new blades. Um, and there's um, there's all different types of blades as well that I, that I use in, in that respect. What about yourself, Dirk? You, um, you, you, do you buy or do you sharpen your own? Um, Chris, I, I don't have a real uh, type of expensive, you know, chisel set or uh, hand tools for that matter because – it's not the avenue of woodworking I sort of took on. Um, <clears throat> but what I do do is um, my chisels are a cheap Trojan brand from the big store. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they've yet to sort of really go really blunt because I haven't had that much usage. But when we're talking about table saw blades, um, it's interesting you raise the topic of branding. And, and I think there's a significant thing that goes into the technology as it does in a lot of uh, – Items that are a little bit more expensive. So the Diablo is great. Uh, I've been using CMT Orange, um, and uh, I think my first uh, was a generic blade on my Mitre Bosch, uh, my Bosch Mitre saw, which I don't think was quite as good. So I replaced that with the Diablo. But um, you, you know, you, you're talking uh, probably just that better quality carbide that's in it, and. Um, I think I think when you get to a stage where you where you can feel it's starting to dull a bit, and um, you know it comes into the uh, ready to be sharpened, uh, I, I tended to find places to get that done. And um, you know, if if you don't let them go too far uh, awry, um, you, you'll find you'll get perhaps two to three sharpens out of them, where that uh, level of carbide can still, you know, be good enough to give you the cuts for the life of that saw blade. So that's the way I've approached that. Um, and router bits and things like that, I've not necessarily had to sharpen many of those. It's um, 
that's once again because I, I don't use them flat out all the time. And I suppose if you did, you'd probably uh, you, you'd have them up to the shop as well, getting sharpened. But it, it, it can be a bit of a specialised thing, Chris. And um, but you know, like we were talking uh, before the show about um, you can do it yourself, and um, there are interesting options. So if you want to probably elaborate a bit on you know how, how people can go about looking at that aspect. Well, um, I have um, I went and bought all the whetstones and um, and uh, the strops and everything like that, uh, the cutting compound uh, from from Timbercon. I got it all from there, and I gave it a red hot go to see if um, if I could uh, sharpen them myself. It's really not that complicated. It's not that hard. Um, the The honing guide that I have uh, is a Veritas honing guide. And it allows you to um, to set the um, the angle of the bevel and everything, and it even lets you set the micro bevel. Something I never even knew about chisels or anything, but there's also like a micro bevel on them as well. But the trick to it is, um, you got to get the back of the chisel flat. Once that back of the chisel is flat and it's it's um, and polished to like a mirror, it, it is it is deadly sharp. Absolutely deadly sharp, and uh, and the same with the bevel at the front. If you if you cut or if you polish that up so that it's nice and uh, mirror finish, it's it, it's it's deadly sharp. You, you could almost shave with it. And um, and if you have a look at the video that I posted uh, quite some time back on how to how to sharpen them, I actually shaved the um, the hairs off my arm, and and it. It was a cleaner shave I've ever had, you know. It was, it was really good. So it's it's if you want to give it a go, it's it's look, it's expensive to begin with. You've got to buy the stones and the honing guide and everything. Um, but once you've got everything there, um, I mean, I, I give them all my my chisels now. Um, I, I just give them a little bit of a touch up every now and then, and they're, they're sharp as they're they're beautiful. But you said before you had the Trojan um, Trojan chisels, is that right? From yeah, the the big box store. I remember watching an episode uh, from Paul Sellers uh, on how to sharpen chisels, and he bought a set of um, he he paid eight pounds for a set of chisels from Aldi in in England, and um, and he took them through his sharpening process. You know, flattened the back and did everything, and they were just as good as anything that he had. You know, he said, don't don't discount the cheaper ones. He goes, they may not hold an edge for as long as the dearer ones, but you'll still be able to work with them. And if you keep uh, if you keep the, the the sharpening stones and everything on hand, they'll last you for a lifetime. They'll last you for an absolute lifetime. Now, the, the, the chisels that I've got, they're, they're a German uh, chisel, and uh, and I've always said that the Germans make the best tools, by, by far the best tools. I mean, you've got Festool, um, the chisels that I've got, I can't, you know what, the, the name escapes me at the moment, um, but they are absolutely brilliant. The, the, they, they hold their edge and they're fantastic. Um, no, Kirsch, what about Kirsch. the Kirschen, that's the one. Thank you very much. Kirschen, yeah, they are brilliant, absolutely brilliant they are because I've got a set of Trojans as well, but I use those um, on like the the rougher jobs, you know, like uh, when I'm putting up a fence and I need to check out the um, – for the rail, I use a chisel for that. The Kirshian ones I use for like my fine woodworking, which I don't do a lot of, but if I need something, you know, like um, if I'm making like a, a piece of furniture or something, I'll use my good chisels for that. Um, how long have you had your Trojans for? Are they still good? They um, they still cut all right? Well, to be honest, I've probably had them for about two years now, and um, uh, <laughs> I think they are just about due, but... Yes, Chris. So uh, the whetstone I, you actually gave me is something that um, I'm going to put into play because it's a, it has a bit of a, oh, I don't know what you call it. It's a, it's a jig type setup, so it runs on a bit of a shaft, and you can lock in the angles for the particular type of item that you want to sharpen and the, the required angle for that. So that's that's something I want to try to do outside of anything else I'm doing, you know, because it's just a new subject matter to me and it's it's quite interesting. The, there's a little bit of technology behind it, but I agree with you, Chris, that, um, you know, the the good quality tools that you have and, you know, and you get some nice jigs, uh, you can do it at home. Um, but it leads me back to discussing um, 
whether you can sharpen everything at home or not. So when we're going back to the round blades, um, I know there's particular places where I go that I think they have like a tool and cutter grinder, you know, so they're, they're specialised machines, uh, tool making machines, and they can, they're probably even automated nowadays, but they can zip one through in no time, you know, and um, pretty much have it as accurate as you could ever want it and as sharp as, you know, you could possibly imagine. So, uh, you know, and you can you can buy sharpening uh, jigs or machines from shops. You can do it yourself for the circular blade. So, you know, is that an option perhaps? Because I think they range at around about $330. So, and if you're given, I pay $25 to have a saw blade sharpened, you know, you're up around about, I don't know, 12, 13 sharpens before you even pay for that type of machine. So is that worth it, do you reckon? Well, my my advice there would be if um, if you're the sort of guy, if you're running a workshop you know, and you're making furniture every day and you're running your table saw every day and you're running your mitre saw every day, maybe it would pay to buy one of those little machines where you can sharpen your own uh, saw blades. But mm. for for the weekend woodworker like you you and I and you know countless other people, I I'd be hard pressed to justify spending that kind of money on something that I'd probably use, you know, once once in a blue moon, once a year. So, um, but with, with the with the chisels, that was different, you know, because um, they if you use them a lot, they blunt pretty quick. And uh, and we all know that a blunt tool is a very dangerous tool because you know it, it's not doing its job. Um, so I, I thought the the outlay, the cost outlay for for the chisel for the sharpening of the chisels was was a decent sort of was a buy was, was a decent buy you know. But um, and I know the machine you're talking about for the uh, mm. for the round blades. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd be struggling to to justify uh, the cost of one of those. You know, that's not to say that I might just get a brain fade go into Timbercom one day and say, I'll have one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it happened in the past, mate. Um, you yes, know, it's... It <laughs> and the other thing we've got to look at is when is it time to determine that your particular blades need to be sharpened? Because, you know, I think obvious signs are when you're getting burn marks um, that, that shows, uh, you know, it insignificant sharpness left on the thing um and also when there's a prospect prospectively a kickback on you know if you're using it and it just happens to grab on because it's not cutting you know there, there, there's it's prone to accidents happening so I, I think i think there's a little bit of emphasis on monitoring uh how the cuts are going you know um by just having a, a visual at, at what's happening and you know, you get you, once you once you're in the game, you, you get a feel for these things, don't you? You do, you do. And uh, the other thing I sort of watch for when I'm using, um, like my table saw, if I'm struggling to start pushing stuff through the blade, then you know it's time to either get a new blade or sharpen the one you've got. Um, because kickback, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen some of the videos on YouTube about kickback. It mm. could be devastating, mate. You get one of those pieces shooting back at you 100 mile an hour. What's going to hurt? So yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's another thing you got to look at. But um, like the Diablo one that I've got at the moment is, I mean, it's it rips through melamine like like it wasn't even there. It's it's incredible. But I'm sure one of these days I'm going to have to either sharpen it or replace it or something. But yeah, that that's one thing you got to look at is um, how hard you're pushing the timber through, uh, and especially if you're working with hardwoods. Um, you know, like a red gum or uh, or iron bark or something like that. You know, you got to if you got to really struggle to push it through, then I'd be looking at the blade. Do you, mm. do you agree with that, Dirk? Oh, definitely, Chris. And uh, you know, you, you go back then to well, what price do you pay for what quality? Um, I, I would avoid cheap blades um, in particular because the variance in hardness of timbers. You know, and um, I, I tend to think because I, I use a I use a general multi-purpose blade in for cutting most of the things I work with, you know, and I've never really had a great deal of uh, problems with uh, things, you know, like chip out, tear out. Occasionally, it does happen, especially if you're working on say finger jointed boards and that. But 
Um, wholeheartedly, it's 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 pretty much that's my go-to. I, I like to just have one blade in. Uh, you'll cut everything for me, hunky dory. But I know you do a little bit more specialised work, so you'll put in a blade for malamine and then you know put that one another one back in for your hardwood. So how do you look at that uh, aspect of you know interchanging blades and what you use? Um, well, yeah, Dirk, you're right. Uh, up until the time I got my uh, table saw, I wouldn't have known that there were different types of blades to use. Um, and and the technology that goes into them, because, I mean, let's, let's face it, there's there's a lot of work that goes into these saw blades. For uh, when I'm cutting melamine, I have a 100-tooth blade that I put into my table saw, and that gives me, yeah, it gives me a nice, clean, beautiful cut. Um, and if I'm ripping... Uh, red gum or, or merbu or anything like that. I've got a, I think it's a 48 tooth from memory. Um, but you know what? It may even be a 24 tooth. I mean, the teeth are they're massive. Um, I wouldn't have known that, um, that that are different blades for different things. Like you've got uh, ripping blades, you've got cross cut blades, you've got uh, multi tooth blades, you've got everything. You know, so it's, it's another thing to look at uh, what kind of work you're looking at doing. And buying the blade that suits that work. Mm. Otherwise, again, um, and we can't stress this enough: uh, if you're using the wrong blade for it, you know, kickback. You know, that's yeah. that's a really, really bad thing. Kickback is, but I've only had kickback happen to me once. Uh, and luckily, I don't stand behind the job when I'm cutting, so it sort of zipped straight past me, and um, and hit the garage door. So I left a bit of a ding in it, I'll tell you. I left a ding. So you've got mm. to be careful with that. So, yeah, look at the job you're doing as to what blade you need to use, and it'll make life a lot easier. I haven't replaced the blade out of my um, Bosch miter saw yet. Uh, it's got the one that came with it, but that's cutting beautifully at the moment. But I will, um, on your recommendation, Dirk, I will get a Diablo blade and put it in there because they are absolutely brilliant, those blades. They are. <clears throat> and, Chris, this, this leads me on to... Uh... Looking at um, if you're looking for places where you want to get tools sharpened, just do a Google search in your area because there's a 95% chance you're going to find a couple of options, and and those places will uh, generally sharpen all types of blades. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up as well, Chris, is I I put out a question a long time ago, and um, it was about you know, the ceramic inserts into your thicknesses and jointers. And they can be super expensive or they can be affordable. I, I don't know how it works, but I know they're made to certain sizings for particular brandings of machines. But the particular one I had was quite dear to replace. So anyway, long story short, um, I put the question on the Facebook groups and um, someone, sure enough, came back and said, take them out, have a diamond sharpening stone. So at about 600 grit, and just just spin them around, give them a little bit of a touch-up, uh, all of them, and that should put you in good stead. So whether that's a solution, it's worth a try maybe. What do you reckon? Do, do you mean carbide? Carbide inserts, yeah, yeah. So yeah, because you, you said ceramic, because you said ceramic. Oh, my apologies, uh, carbide. I meant yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, carbide. Uh, yeah, I, no, no. I've, I've seen. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Um, because you've got the the helix cutters now that go into these things. Um, yeah, if you lay them flat, you can swirl them around for a couple, of, and it brings the edge right back. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's a way to save a few bob as well if you're um yeah, you know you're sure. not wanting to spend three four hundred dollars on a set. So hmm. I think I think that's uh we're hopefully put a little bit of a good emphasis on um, the topic today, Chris. It's, um, you know, from our background, our knowledge on the matter. What do you reckon? Um, yeah, yeah. I uh, Again, over the years you learn, um, you know, what's good, what's bad, you know, what, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, my, my advice is uh, if you've got chisels, buy, buy the sharpening stones. Uh, they'll last your lifetime if you treat them right and you can sharpen your own gear. And you'll probably be a lot happier. I mean, for me, it gives me a lot more uh, satisfaction knowing that I've sharpened this chisel and it cuts paper like nothing, you know, or goes through timber like like it's not even there. Uh, blades, that's a whole different story for me. I mean, uh, I 
whenever I need to sharpen a blade, I or I need a sharp blade, I'll either buy one. Yeah, so I reckon, uh, Dirk, you know, you know what I'm like. I'm probably going to end up buying one of those machines and sharpening my own uh, my own blades. You know, it doesn't take much to push me over the edge about something. Thanks for that, Dirk. No, that's all right. And, uh, you know, you might hear, Chris, uh, just bought a few blades down, mate. Are you able to uh, just give them a touch-up for me? Ten bucks. I'll pay ten bucks. Ten bucks each? <laughs> no, it's a pair. Ten bucks a tooth. <laughs> oh, jeez. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, well, look, if anyone's got any questions, I mean, if there's something that we haven't covered in this, um, leave a comment down below. Uh, we'll, we'll try and source um, the answer for you if we don't know it, and um, and we'll, we'll go from there. And just quickly, I did hear there's a place in Bendigo, Victoria, that manufactures saw blades, so I'll try to get the name, and if I do, we'll link it down below as well. So that's that's a good one as well to consider. That's a good one, yeah, yeah. Buy Australian, mate. We need to buy Australian. That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, another good show there, Chris. Thanks, mate. It's um, it's a pleasure to be able to do these shows for people, and um, thank you to Marvin for that. Also, keep us uh, keep the information, uh, any queries you have coming. Um, now, because we're a couple of good blokes, the Dinky Die Down Under fellas, uh, we're we're quite charitable. And episode seventeen, we'll uh, see out the first season of Measure Twice Cut once, and. For that, Chris, I think we should do a little bit of a giveaway. Uh, so we, we'll see if we can um, perhaps rustle some feathers and, you know, see see what's out there to give the good folks uh, something. But you must be a subscriber and uh, and uh, be part of the show and share it around. I reckon that's a fair call, isn't it, Chris, to be part of a giveaway? I think so. I think we can find somebody um, worthy of a bit of a giveaway. We've got to talk to some people, see what we can come up with. And, uh, and we're not going to just hand them out. We're going to come up with an idea that you have to uh, either answer a question or um, you need to do a backflip or something, you know, so that uh, you you deserve you deserve what we're going to give you. Yes. And, and <laughs> I look like it, but uh, from the front. Where um, yeah. I yes, don't agree too fast. Um, so... <laughs> Basically, if you listen to us uh, on an audio podcast, um, you may have to uh, just leave us a message, jump across to the YouTube side of it. Uh, once we once we pose a question for whatever the, it go, it's going to be, and um, you know that'll that'll lead you into a bit of a type of hat. Put the names in the hat, Chris. You got your hat, and um, you know we're going to uh, hopefully make someone's Christmas a little bit cheerier than it has. Uh, yeah. We've had a shocking year, mate. We've had a shocking year, most people, and we want to give back a little bit. Yeah, it's been a bit of a bugger. Are we, are we allowed to give the the gifts to ourselves, Dirk? Uh, there's a word for that, isn't there? And it, it leads to a prison sentence inside Does of trading, okay, right. embezzling. Is I don't it? know. Okay, all right, all right. It's just forget I said that. That's what people say. We might have to Could cut that out. So, Cut that out. Yeah, snip it, snip it. Snip Get it. that out. Yeah, so yeah, people don't it. know. All right. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, anyway, that's that's where we're at. We want to do something for the last show. Stay tuned for it. And um, and I think that'll be something really, really nice. But before we get into the Christmas cheer this year, uh, we're going to have a special guest on next week. And... All things being equal in the universe, uh, we're going to introduce to the listeners and the viewers uh, a gentleman by the name of Ash Walker, who uh, hosts an excellent um, Instagram IGTV program called uh, Woodwork and Whiskers. So he's a, he's quite a good person. He represents the Australian community, and he wears his um, you know heart on his sleeve. So it's going to be a good one, Chris and. We're trying to get as many good Australian talent uh, onto our show uh, every every several weeks and, um, yeah, just make that a bit of a highlight. So we're looking forward to seeing Mr Walker on the show. I, I know I will be. I, I've uh, watched his, um, his uh, Instagram IGTV shows and they are really, really good. 
who's doing a, an excellent job in that respect. Yeah, and um, you know, just he, he was combining it with some Australian musical talent as well. So, you know, great, great man, and uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing his life uh, and and hobby story as well. So, that'll be coming out next week. Can't so, wait. Chris, everyone, get on there, subscribe to the show, share it around, and uh, you know, make sure you get your friends on board, your neighbours on board, your pets on board. Uh, we all want to be on the back of the Ute. Shout and the uh, these are twice cut once. How yeah, about that? And if you got the uh, if you got the podcast in the car, crank it up as loud as you can. Let it rock. Now I've got a good Let mic. It Let it rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. On uh, on that note, I'll uh, have a good week, mate. And uh, I'll sign off by saying to everyone, Huru. And uh, yeah, same to you, Dirk. Uh, try, oh, you're on holidays, so uh, I won't say don't work too hard, but. Um, We'll, uh, we'll keep in touch and I'll say bye for now.